I just want to share this simply because, I mean, I feel as a community, you know, our conversations is what's going to push us through. As you may or may not have heard, I have been trying my hand at comedy. And well, for five weeks now, I just been seeing, you know, just isolated moments of salt dropping. You dig? And I want to say this, and I'm going to be very careful with my wording because I don't want this to sound adversarial in any way. Because I ain't really got no problem or no issue with you. None of you people who dropping salt on my name. Because salt, salt kills snails, not players, all right? Um, but what I like, I, I, I want to be very careful because I, I, I'm really trying to, I'm trying to starve my ego as much as possible. That's what my next album is about. Kill the king. Killing the king is killing the ego. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but when I hear this, what, what, I, what I want y'all to know is, for one, bro, what God got for you is yours. Can't nobody take that from you. Okay? It's important that y'all know that because y'all feel like all of a sudden because I'm now standing on the stage uh, sharing my gifts with the world. You know what I'm saying? Utilizing the tools and the skills that I've developed or that I am developing you feel like that's in your way some kind of way. And that's more your problem than I could ever be. The fact that you think that somebody else doing something that you're doing is going to stop you from doing what you need to do to get what you need to be, nigga, that's your problem right there. Like, okay, so... Uh, I have a lot of respect and admiration for a legend and a goat in the comedy shit. His name is Godfrey. Alright. His name is Godfrey. <sighs> and uh, I had the pleasure. Of sharing the stage with him. Um, I had the pleasure of sharing the stage with him. At the Atlanta Comedy Theater. And uh, had a good time. You know what I'm saying. Got up there. And worked on my set. You know what I mean. I enjoyed the crowd, enjoyed the opportunity. And well, I thought all was well. I thought it went very good. And then I see I see an interview with Godfrey. And how I see Godfrey, Godfrey is a legend. He's a GOAT. I'm talking about, I mean, he, undeniable. All right? Undeniable. And I see him as a giant in the comedy shit. And what I saw in this interview was, I saw a legend trying not to hate while hating. You know what I mean? Um, like in your windows, little goddamn little tidbits of hate here and there while coupling it or surrounding it with some compliments to make it seem like you ain't hating for real. But uh, mm, to be honest with you, bro, to me that made a giant look small in my eyes. Simply because uh, what you said was, you know, you know, I, I came and and, and I, I went on after you, uh, and and you wasn't gonna come out there and watch me because it would have made you look small. How in the fuck can I make you a giant in this shit look small? What the fuck? Why, why would you even be thinking like that? Okay, now we, we share a pleasant exchange that I appreciate and still value the moment to this day. Uh, and you also mentioned, you know, how I got on the stage. And if you would have asked me how I got on the stage and what brought me to the theater, I would have told you. I just happened to have been in a real estate development meeting with three people who were each worth are responsible for over a billion in real estate internationally. Now, in this meeting, we were casually discussing the things that we've been doing in the past few weeks, and it just happened to come up that I had been doing stand-up. And one of uh, the people in the meeting that I was meeting with, that we were working on, you know, doing some real estate shit together, he said, oh, well, you know what? I own the plaza that the comedy theater is in. We, why don't we just go up there, man, and you do your thing, man? You know, I want to see what you got going on. Because we're working on a real estate development play that will include a comedy club. 
okay? So he say, I guess he wanted to just see that I was serious about the shit. So he said, man, why don't you come on up to my spot? You know, the person who rents from me out of my plaza happens to operate a comedy club. And it's open now. So let's come on up there. Let's go on up there and do it. And that's what we did. That's how I got on the stage, bro. It wasn't because I wanted to come to Godfrey's show and go on stage after he came off, my man. It was because I was handling my business. And my business brought me to your show. Because, because the person I was handling business with happens to own the building that the comedy theater rents from that you were paid, whatever you were paid, to perform at, okay? So, bro, like, my man, but all you had to do was ask me. All you had to do was say, hey, bro, how you get, like, what brought you here, man? What made you, you know what I mean? Like, you ain't got to, you ain't got to drop salt, man, and dry hate, man. You ain't got to do that, bro. He ain't got to do that. My man. What I do see or, or what I did ascertain is that you were fully aware of my ability to add value and contribute more shine, more opportunity, more whatever to the comedy game. And that's true. I can and I hope to. That's my intention. That's to, to all, all ships rise with the high tide. You hear me? So if a motherfucker come, a uh, motherfucker paying more attention to comedy because Tip is, is, is on stage, whether it's because they want to see him fail or, or, or they want to see what he got to say, whatever it is. Bro, that shit should help you and everybody else in this shit. You know what I mean? Because the one thing I see is it ain't enough money to go around right now. But get what? I don't want the money. It ain't enough for me to even bother myself with. I'm in it for the love of the shit. You understand? I'm doing it because I love to do it, bro. Doing it because I got a passion to do it. I ain't made a fucking dime. I ain't looking for it. Don't need it. Would like it, but that's later. Now, what you are failing to do is recognize something, someone who could be an ally, someone who could be an asset, someone who could add value, and, 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 and you misrepresenting that as opposition. Bro, I'm not your opponent. You're talking about, you know what I'm saying, you've been doing this and, and, and how long you've been doing it, and, 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 and for somebody to come on after you, after you were headlining. Hey, bro, you know how many motherfucking comedians it is out there rapping right now? You know how many comedians it is out there doing rap? Nigga, I've been doing rap. I've been rapping since I was eight years old, bro. It took me 16, 17, probably 20 years to goddamn get where I wanted to be. You dig what I'm saying? Now, if a motherfucker was to bring a comedian to an arena, the owner of the arena was to bring a comedian to that arena after I had done got through ripping my motherfucking my, my set and, and I done got paid. And I'm leaving or, or, or exiting the stage, and they say, hey, let my man go on, on there and do his thing. Well, I'm going to say, uh, shit, if he got the nuts to get out there, I just smoke that motherfucker. Let him go on and do it. And another thing you said in your little interview is you said that he's not a comedian. And had you taken the time to come to the stage, which you said that you would not do and you should not do, but I, I disagree. You would have heard in my set, I say, I am not a comedian. I'm a superstar. That's the difference. There's a difference. You would have heard that, bro. Like, I'm really just, man, because to be honest with you, I'm still tip. I'm still the same tip. The same motherfucker who they said couldn't be the king of the South and, and, and back in 2000, 2001. That shit made it personal for me. And that's why I'm the king of the South today. Because I took it that serious. Because they said I couldn't do it. And that what y'all nigga bringing out of me. You hear me? And I'm in this motherfucker for peace. I came in the motherfucker for peace and tranquility. You understand? But what y'all doing here? You poking a bell. You poking a bell. I'm still tilt, bro. This shit still go up. But with a lot more discernment, you know what I mean? With a lot more discernment, a lot more thought, a lot more uh, 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 intention now, okay? So look, man. Let's everybody, man, coexist together. Everybody help each other. If it's a way I can help you, man, just shit, man. Tap me on the shoulder and talk to me about it, bro. Don't drop salt and hate, man. Don't do that, bro. Don't do that, bro. 
Because that's going to make me look at you different. And once I get to looking at you different, I ain't going to be able to look at you the same ever again. I got a lot of respect for you, a lot of you. So, man, don't let me catch you out there hating because you think somebody threatening your position who ain't even coming for your position. Don't make me get to applying pressure to the position that you applying for. So special. What you know about pressure? When you from, where you from, and a nigga wanna take your life. When you got two strikes and you gotta let the judge in his eye.